Howdy! Beeflo Bart here, and welcome. Alright, picking back up on the, um, the heist project. So I want to do a couple little things. I'm not sure where we were when we left off, and started with uh, the other two series that are going on. Alright, we got our FBI character. We're going in to put a stop to a bank heist in project progress. Of course, we don't have anybody heisting. So, draw the pistol. Fire. We dropped empty shell casings. Particle effect. Sound file. Um, we've got a flashlight that works. Reload. Doesn't have any sounds to it yet. But you can see it drops the magazine. Put some sounds in. Um, I have added a suppressor sound to the Discord channel and the demos page. And I want to go ahead and utilize that. We'll actually go ahead and put it on. Um, we'll add an animation for it later. Whether we do just kind of like the, uh, the other one where we just put it down and bring it back up or take it out of view and then bring it back up, that kind of thing. But what we need to do is be able to go from that gunshot sound, which is uh, that one, and change it over to this one whenever we're in the suppressor mode. So we'll just set up the basic functionality of it first, then we'll worry about the animations later. And yes, at some point we're going to add the, the line trace in and start doing damage and that kind of stuff. But let's go ahead and get this going just so we can have an option, something else to play with. Now I have added the uh, the sound files in here, and well, the sound files, and created a queue for it, and created a new attenuation for it, which is just going to be close, 400 and 800 on the, um, the radius and distance. So that whenever we fire it, it's not going to transmit the sound quite as far. All right, so when we go into our weapons, blueprints. Um, if we go into the master, what's happening, brother? We've got uh, the fire pistol, and this is where we're calling the sound file from it. So we need to know whether or not we have the suppressor on or not. So we're going to actually put this into the actual pistol itself instead of on the player. So we've got the reload magazine. We'll add sounds to that as well. Um, but for a fire pistol, we need to, at this point, uh, modify this just a wee bit. We're going to grab this custom event and drop it down. And we did this in previous videos of setting these up. And we need to bring these down because we need to have room for a branch node here. But we don't have um, with the condition. We don't have the are we using a suppressor yet. So we need to go into the and we'll fix that here in just a second. Uh, the character blueprint. Character blueprint player underscore base. And we're starting to move things around a little bit, but I haven't done anything in here yet. Alright, so when we're doing our pistol stuff here. Number two key, that was for drawing it out. And this is on our fire pistol. And we need to go ahead and create. We've got a lot of stuff we need to uh, clean up in here. Um, this is all, that's death and damage. So let's go ahead and just bracket that and and death and damage. So I can actually just go ahead and cleanly move this somewhere else if we need to. And that's the flashlight. We can go ahead and comment that. Let's call it a flashlight. And here's our reload stuff. So that'll just kind of clean things up just a little bit. 
All right, and fire pistol. We don't need to modify that. So for right now, let's go ahead and create keyboard. Mm, let's go with Q for now. Always come back and change that later. So on keyboard Q, we're going to do what? We're going to add a variable, use silencer, and compile, save. Now, we're going to have to go into the mesh as well. We'll get that here in just a minute. But what we're going to do is flip-flop this. But so that it is replicated, we're going to move down here and do a custom event. And that's going to be client use silencer. And we're going to multicast that and make it reliable. Because this is going to change a cosmetic item and it's also going to change the sound. And then we also need another custom event, which is going to be use silencer. And we can't do that yet because we need to put an exclamation point at the end of that. All right, so we can use our silencer, and this is going to actually be run on server. So what we want to do is we want to attach the silencer to the weapon, and we want to set the, the sound file. And for right now, we're just going to go ahead and set the variable, set use to true. And we're going to have to also move this out of the way for now because we're going to have to remove it. And the best way to do this is to actually create another custom event. Custom and this will be client remove silencer. You can call these whatever you want to make it shorter. And we'll just go ahead and multicast that as well. And then it's going to have its own companion of another custom event. Remove Silencer. And again, that one's going to be run on server. So, when we remove the silencer, we're going to basically do the opposite of that. We're going to uncheck that. This will get us started with setting up the Pistol Master here. Because we, we're only using the same sound files for everything. Um, now, we have our default sound. Let's go ahead and place on a location. Let's drag off from the blue pin from here. And we want to promote to variable. And we're going to call this our gunshot sound. And we're going to need to make some room here. So I'm going to grab everything except for the actual custom event and just move things back for now. And we're going to cast to player underscore base, which is our player character. And get our player character reference. And we need to use get use silencer. We have to move everything some more. Always that way. Whenever you think you've moved everything far enough, you haven't. So, in this case, if we are using it, we're going to play one sound. And then, if we're not, we're going to use a different sound. And we could do this a couple different ways. We can do this, um, or we can actually ignore that gunshot sound. And if we're doing it this way, let's go ahead and let's compile and save, because that is actually going to give us a, um, 
the file here. We'll just change that to normal gunshot. And then we're going to create another new variable, which we're going to be silenced gunshot. Again, call them whatever you want. We're going to have to change the variable type to Uh, let's see here. What did this one create? Oh, worst case scenario, we can also drag out from there again and call this one silenced. And for now, we'll just remove that one that we started doing. And we just cheated a little bit and created that one. Compile, save, and go ahead and change this over to our silenced queue. So if we are silenced, we're going to play this, and then we're going to go into all that. And if we are not, I'm just going to move these around a little bit here. And control C and control V so we can copy another play sound at location. We're going to keep the same location, but we can take our normal gunshot reference and bring it in here and plug that into there. We didn't have to create the variables, but meh, we could do it either way. So now we have the normal gunshot sound and silenced gunshot sound and we're getting that based on whether our player is using it as with or without. So these are not configured to actually work yet. So we could went in here to play. We got nothing. Right? Because we don't have everything configured yet. We're asking a question, is it yes or no? And We've got it right here, defaulting to no. Casting two, we're checking from the player, and we're going to play this, and then we have to connect this to here as well, so that it returns back in. So, now what did I do? Oh, because I did not plug that in there. I, I blame Eagle for that. It's all his fault. Okay, we have no sound, but we're shooting again. Our normal gunshot is 9mm Q. Our silenced gunshot is silenced Q. What did I break? Yeah, I know. He's always breaking stuff. I'm calling my bull in a china shop. Alright, so we're asking our player if we're using the sounds or not and if we are not we're going to play the normal gunshot sound and then go back into the rest so why did it stop working because we actually break that and plug that right back into here this should be in effect like doing nothing not checking at all So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of those. And we're going to break that back. We're going to push this back through the way it's supposed to. And we're just going to manually put it in here. 9mm Q and, I'm sorry, that should be silenced Q. And this should be 9mm Q. 
So it's going to check see if we're using the silencer. If it is no, then we're going to play the normal sound. And if it is yes, then we're going to play the, the silent sound. So let's go ahead and finish tying this back in and getting this to work. So we're just using this to set that to yes and no. And we're going to do more to it, but let's get it functional for the, the audio part. And then we'll go to the next part. So we're going to run Switch has Authority on here, on both of them. So we, we're allowing it to be done by everybody, essentially, giving authority to um, client use silencer. And client remove silencer. And then we're going to tie them into this right here. So the first time it's going to be yes. Second time it's going to be no. So we're using the actual the server version instead of the client version. So this should in effect replace the sound. Again, goes back to normal. So we're good there. Now we just need to add some other functionality to this. So when we say use it, we want to add a silencer in. So let's check our mesh for our pistol. So we're going to go to Polygon Heist. Going to meshes. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be doing. So we actually have a skeletal mesh for the silencer, which is a good thing. So if we look in here, we have our actual pistol we need to be looking at. So if we look at the viewport, we've got kind of junk to in the way here. Got the pistol, and we got the flashlight light is a skeletal mesh. So let's go ahead and physically look at the pistol mesh because we need to add that to the pistol and make sure we have uh, on the pistol skeleton. Now I've already added it in looks like. Got our muzzle, magazine, ejection port, and light. So if we go to our muzzle, right click and add preview asset. Look right there. So we can see by doing that, it is not positioned correctly. So let's go ahead and rotate it and move it. All right, so we'll hit save and that should be good. We'll double check here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and select our, our pistol mesh and make sure that we have the silencer skeletal mesh selected. And then we're going to go ahead with the pistol selected there, it's just called mesh inherited. Wrong. Let's get off of you. Get out of here. We don't need you. Pistol. So yeah, skeletal mesh. We can actually change that to say pistol. So we know what it is. This is the pistol's mesh. So we're going to add a component to that, which is going to be a skeletal mesh. And the silencer is already attached, so we can just call this a silencer. And let's go ahead and on our parent socket, attach it to muzzle, and there you go. Now what's going to happen here is another problem. Because we're spawning the emitter here for our gunshot at the muzzle, and I'll show you what this is going to look like here after we do this, we actually have to um, add another variable in. So we're going to need to make some room again. 
And for right now, the silencer is just going to be attached. We're going to leave it that way just for right now, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we hit play, and we draw our pistol. It's there. And when we fire, the muzzle flash is still going to come out from where the end of the, the, the muzzle was. And that's no bueno for our, our silencer. We need it to actually use a different location. So now that we have this attached, we're going to have to go back in here again, click on our pistol, our, our primary right here, and let's add a socket. And we're going to select it, hit F2. We're going to call this our SD muzzle, not with an S on the end, but just S, SD space muzzles. Muzzle. Hell, I can't talk tonight. And then we're going to need to locate it so that it's in the correct location. That looks good. So we're going to have to change that location in our pistol uh, blueprint. So this is the emitter location. Now we can do this a couple different ways. Um, got our ejection port. This is for our spawn transform for our empty shell casings. And we're just using this location here for responding the emitter um, from the muzzle. We're going to have to get another location for this emitter. And let's go ahead and break this link here. And we'll grab this one and drag it down to here. That's actually holding down the control key and then left clicking on, on the end of the uh, executable and dragging it down. All right, so this is what we're doing for the normal. Because we're using that location for the emitter we need to remove that emitter completely and just bypass it and we can go from here into here if we don't want to have any kind of particle effect whatsoever but if we do want to have that particle effect then we're going to have to go ahead and copy that over so if we do control C and control V and add that into here We're going to have to get a another reference here from our pistol, and we need to grab that. So we got our, our get socket location, which we can just drag off from the pistol, and get socket location. Yeah, I am so OCD about grid locations and everything. And this one was going to be, and if you don't remember the name of it, you can always come back in here and hit F2 and Control C and then click off of it again. So you can just copy it into your clipboard and Control V, paste it in. And this is the location that we're going to use. We can use the same rotation value here. And the emitter is going to be the same, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we could do that. And since everything else should be fine, technically we could go ahead and then go from our emitter down to here and run both of them going into that same part. Because we're still wanting to do the the fire animation for the pistol itself and we still want to do the uh empty shell casing kicking out. So in theory, that should do it. So now we draw our pistol out. We hit Q. And the muzzle flash is coming from the correct location. Hit Q again. Now we, we need to make the, um, the silencer itself go away. So that would be the next thing. Let's 
go ahead and hit save on that and we can close the skeleton so we can go to here with a silencer scroll down and uncheck visible and what that's going to do is when we go into the game draw it out it's not there but if we decide to use the silencer we need to make that visible so again let's go ahead and break that one more time and let's go ahead and actually you know we can actually leave that connected not the best place to put this in here but gonna do it anyway so we get a reference from our silencer and we're going to this is absolutely the wrong place to do it and I'll probably end up changing it after because it's probably not going to give me the best result so connect that in here and that's to here and silencer into here. The reason why I say this is probably not going to give me the best result is we're already, this is only while we're into the firing. So it's still going to show up if we draw the pistol. It's not there. But see, we just fired. And why is it still there? So we need to get that out of there. That, I knew that was not going to be the, the best location for it. Connect your ass back up. I know you guys are... If you're following along as I'm doing this, you're probably like, why the hell didn't you just do it right the first time? Because um, I'm a jackass. And my mind is on other shiite right now. So, okay, nice and neat and clean. And let's go ahead and make sure that everything is functioning correctly here. Even though the pistol is still there. So now we just need to, to add the silencer and take it away as necessary. So instead of doing it in the pistol, we actually need to do this in the player. Player, Blueprint. Okay, so when we say to use the silencer, we're enabling it with this right here, and that's great. Um, when we spawn our pistol in, uh, do, 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 where is pistol? When we draw a pistol, it is going to spawn actor from class right here and we gave it a reference right there pistol in hand so if we come down here now and go to our pistol grab pistol in hand get a reference to it and then get silencer we're getting it directly from that with no problems And I'm going to position this in the middle between the two of them. I'm just going to use the same reference between both of them. And all we're going to do is set visibility. Control C and Control V. So when we press Q to actually um, equip the, the, uh, the silencer, when we say use the silencer, we're going to set the visibility of it to be true. When we hit it again, we're just going to take it off. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I forgot to connect you. So, using that reference, that should allow us to draw our pistol. 
put our silencer on. Take it off. Cool. Yeah, I'm always hard on myself. Somebody's got to be. Beautiful, right? Still not doing any damage with this gun. Because we don't either... I haven't set up whether I want... Well, it's going to be awkward doing it this way. Setting up a first-person view where the camera's right there in front of the player. and You know, or... Because you don't... I don't like most views for the cameras. We could build an offset for the camera and make it to where when we move the mouse around, our character moves around left and right and rotates the, our actual body. Um, you know, whenever we're in this mode, we can look up and down so that we actually have something visual. Um, let's actually... Because we know that works. That's good on the silencer now. When we fire the pistol... We're actually just, um, right now it's just for looks. Um, we can actually, and here's the, the misconception you're going to find in a lot of video games. Well, it's got a silencer, so it's going to do less damage. Not a noticeable amount. In real life, it's not a noticeable amount of difference. And the only difference it's going to make in a handgun, specifically if it's using a subsonic ammunition. If you're using supersonic ammunition, it's going to make no difference. Um, if you're using subsonic to make it even quieter, then mm, yes or no, it's going to add a little bit less damage overall because the bullet's moving slower. What makes a silencer work correctly is if you're using a 1911, the, the normal ammo fired from a, a 45 ACP is naturally 980 feet per second which is below the speed of sound therefore it's easier to quiet it down because you don't have a sonic crack. If you're using conventional 9mm ammo on a Glock and you put a silencer on there that ammo is moving around 1200 feet per second or so maybe 1300, 1400 depending on the ammo but it's going over the speed of sound so you're going to get a sonic crack yeah, if you're using a, a silencer on an M4 or an M16, um, that sonic crack is still pretty damn loud, even with a suppressor on or a silencer on. So I'm trying to get a good mix between Hollywood and real life. So the the only difference for in-game is going to be that you're quieter. Your gunshot sounds don't radiate as far. So if you're trying to be quiet, you don't want anybody to know that you're getting ready to smoke Eagle because he's he's camping up on the balcony and you sneak up behind him and put a silent shot in the back of his head. Yeah, I, I, weapons consulting is one of the things that I do. <laughs> I mean, hell, I've probably got, what, eight guns within ten feet from me right now? Um, you know, I've been shooting since I was probably seven, six or seven years old, and I'm 51-ish. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've i shot pretty much everything you can imagine. Um, U.S. Army, uh, Army National Guard at one point. Yeah, I've been around firearms all my life, so... Let's see, on our fire pistol... Um, we can put this on, yeah, so anytime you got actual gun questions, let me know. Left mouse button, we're firing our pistol, we're just doing this custom event. Um, the line trace does not have to be replicated, so let's see if we can just push it off of this right here for now. Um, Let's do line trace by channel. Probably won't keep it here anyway, but just to get started with um, 
actually knowing where our pistol is hitting. And our draw debug type, we're going to change for duration. So what we need now is a location for it to start from. So, oh yeah, um, I got everything from, I got some 5.56 ammo, 300 blackout, 9mm, 45, uh, I'm pretty well set. Not super set, could always use more, but you know, if you have one bullet, you can have as many as you want, <laughs> if you know how to use that one bullet. And, yeah. Eagle has seen me shoot and knows how well I can place that one bullet. Alright, so we need to start and end. For now, I'm going to use... Damn, I hate to do this, but... Let's just get... For my FPS cam. Let's um, get world location, and we can plug that into our start for our line trace. And then I'm going to go from here and get forward vector. And now that I've got my forward vector, that's the direction that I'm going or facing. Um, and the FPS camera is going to be more or less center of my view whenever I hit V I'm using that camera. Um, so what I need to do right now is come off from that vector, type in float, so I can do vector times float. This is how far out my laser beam is going to shoot out, or my, my line trace. And I'm going to allow it to go 2000 because we're using a pistol. We don't want it super far. Then we're going to drag off from our world location and plus, so it would be vector plus vector. We're going to add these two numbers together and then plug that in for the end location of my line trace. And on hit, break hit results. Yeah, I, I don't have enough room here. But for right now, let's just go ahead and I'm going to use the same gunshot, gunshot emitter um, just because it'll work. So I'll spawn emitter at location. And the location is going to be the impact point. And the emitter is going to be. Oh, impact spark. I did make one. Okay. Um, Let's just see here. Draw a pistol. It drew a line trace, pretty much from, from the center of our view. And that line trace is what's going to be our do damage or not. Now, if I go into FPS mode, this is actually using, ooh, it's terrible, but using that camera. So wherever I'm aiming, wherever I'm looking, the center of my screen is going to be where that camera is going to put that shot. And if we do a blend space later to actually match up with everything, that would be nice. But um, we at least can see where we're going with our bullets. So let's actually, just for Shiites and Grins, let's go ahead and run two players. All right, you guys can see the client. This is the client here. Server is off the screen on a different monitor. So if the, um, let's get them where it can be seen. Draws his pistol out. You can't see the line trace because it's not in a replicated state, but you don't want to see it anyway. Um, if I change the silencer, you can see he has the silencer out now. The correct sound, take the silencer off. On and off, we'll see if on. Reload, you can see the, the shell drop. I don't know why we had a little bit of lag there. Well, 
what the hell is going on with this computer. And for some reason, the um, the particle effect just doesn't look right. But the server. Of course, you can't see where I'm aiming. So let's actually, as we're over here looking, the O in the money bank. Since the server is actually firing directly at the O, you can't see exactly where you're shooting, and I don't know why the hell it's getting laggy all of a sudden. And. Let's actually go into a stronger pistol. Put our silencer on. You can see our own line trace, and that's fine. Change our view. So the server can't see the the client's bullet impacts, and you know you can't see them back and forth. So it's kind of similar to know that we're actually doing something. Um. Yeah, they'll actually have a, a pawn sensing ability, and they'll actually know to look at the player. So we know that we're actually doing something here. We can actually um, print text, and well, we can just get our hit actor. We'll just do a two text. And just plug that into my print text. So we know what we're actually hitting. I'll show you a quick example of that with the. Uh... Alright, so we hit prop, sign, money bank. So we're getting a report back that we're actually hitting something. Eh, I don't know. You notice I'm shooting at the player, but it's not actually hitting the player. It's reporting back um, that it was a hit. There we go. Um, but yeah, the um, the client and the server can't see what the other is hitting. So the client we could see was shooting that. The server is shooting something, you can actually see what the server is hitting. So, let's go back into one player and same pie here. Throw a pistol. He said, when I figure out which way I want to go with my camera for shooting. kind of go from there and I was doing kind of a parallel project at the same time for this so that I could test out what I wanted to run in this project versus the other one and back and forth so I'll load that one on top here and we'll just minimize this one It's going to look a lot alike. I haven't done the sound or anything in this one yet, but nope, I don't want two player. I want one. So our player. Whenever I go into this view, I actually have a little dot there, and the camera's moved farther forward from the pistol. I don't know if you notice here, but um. Our, there's a bot in here who just... I haven't set up the death animation for the bots yet. But I don't like the fact that it's... Whenever I go to draw the weapon, it pushes it all the way in. But you get that... Eh, weirdness going on. And... So I don't like that camera view, so I'm playing around with different camera views of how I want it. So you can see, we got a bad guy in, in inside this room right here, and as soon as I pop up, oh, he's going to shoot at me. Pop up, 
He shoots. And watch my health bar. I mean, he was actually shooting. I didn't give him the full pistol animations and everything else, too, but if you die, you respawn. So, like I said, I don't know how I want to do the, um, the camera. There's so many different ways you can do the cameras and so forth for setting it up. Oh, this is all blueprints. Need to do the death animations and everything on them. So, so this project, the only difference was on the um, the NPCs. All I did was very, very simple. Well, it doesn't look simple, but trust me, it is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just I spitball through my my prototyping to see what I like, and then I go back and I put it in the regular one. Um, on C pawn or your pawn sensing, if you look in the viewport, you select your pawn sensing. Um, you see right now it's set at ninety. The green spider web thing, that's your actual um, view angle. Change it to eighty, and you see it moves forward. You can set up that cone to be whatever you want for their visibility. So when they see you, then they can react. So, compound, compound, save there. So, on the pawn sensing, we're just referring to the player base, which is our player character, and uh, what was this right here? We're checking to see if the player's health. So essentially what was going on here, was if you're dead, he, he doesn't need to be shooting at you anymore. So I'm just checking right here if the target's health is zero. If so, then just don't do anything. Basically, it's saying if your health is greater than zero, then shoot at him, in other words. Um, getting the world location, um, find the look at rotation, so they'll actually turn and face the other uh, player. And it sets that into a custom event. Um, when we get to the actual AI portion of it, we'll actually be doing all this. Um, I'm actually setting up the death here, and I don't have it done all the way yet. For some reason, I don't have it all, all the way done. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want. They were continuing to shoot whoever they were shooting at, and and. It didn't have to be replicated. Well, it did. I, I did set it up on a basic replication system, but um, essentially what was happening was whenever they killed somebody, they just kept shooting the same dead guy, you know, <laughs> until they couldn't see him anymore. So I had to put that in there to keep him from shooting live people. And um, I thought I had another map. Whatever, save select. I didn't change anything. Crackhead. Um, to like now, dude's over here. He doesn't have a weapon drawn. But as soon as I get within range, and he sees me, he snaps and looks towards me, and starts shooting. He can't see me, but if I pop out over here, I'll change. yes and no on getting lost on them and that's the thing is I always preach proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance the 7p method if you plan ahead and as you're doing things yeah it looks like a bunch of jumbled up crap here because I don't have it um, in comment boxes you put things in a comment box and you can see okay this is the escape menu functionality so as you zoom out you can actually look at the tags ahead Gamepad input, VR, movement input, but things that are not in it, you really can't understand what's going on. And it looks like a bunch of frickin' spaghetti. So you select everything, like this is my death and damage. 
So I'll select it all, I'll hit the C key on the keyboard, and just type in death and damage. Another way to help prevent you from getting lost in all the spaghetti is when you, you have it selected here on the comment block, go right here under comment color, and red. I give um, damage stuff and death and damage or anything to do with damaging is all done bracketed in red like that. So no matter what, I can, uh, gee, where's my death and damage? Oh, well, never mind. It's right there. The big red stuff. Um, this is my view change. So I can come over here, hit the C key, view stuff, and view should be a blue, right? Yeah, let's do like a light blue color. And hit OK. Oh, this doesn't just work in here. When you're setting up your project, a blueprints folder, you're trying to find your blueprints folder for your player character. So why not um, right click on your blueprints folder, set color, and give it a color. So now when you're trying to figure out, well, where the hell's my blueprint folder? Oh, blueprint must be blue. So there, I got a blue folder, so I know exactly where it is. In here, if I'm looking for weapons, let's make that red, so I know that it's a weapons folder. So I can right-click on the folder, set color, new color, I'm going to use red. Once you have a color that you like, drag that color up here, and you can save that color and use it whenever you want. So weapons, boom, red. I know that's going to be it. Um... What if I want my data folder for my list and stuff like that? I want that to be green. So set color, new color. I can either manually in input it, so it's zero and all green and no blue. That sounds good. And I'm going to save this color for later, so I'm going to drag it up here and OK. So now my data folders are, are, blue, are green. My weapons folders are red. My blueprints are blue. Maps, I want that to be yellow. So I'll right click on that and set color, new color, we'll do 0.5 and 0.5, that looks good for yellow, we'll save it there too, and okay, so now my maps folder is yellow, I can easily go back to it. So as you're trying to, to not just sort through the spaghetti of your your actual blueprints, you can actually clean up yourself to the point where, um, oh, where's my blueprint? Oh, there it is. And I can go right into it. Um, mesh folder, you can make it light blue if you want to. Um, just set color, new color. Find a color you like, and yeah. So this way it's pushing you into that organization of knowing how where's my blueprints oh there it is kind of a player and bam found exactly what I was looking for quickly because I had planned ahead and, and had my things like that so this is fire pistol I'm gonna comment that fire pistol and that should be a red color as well because it's doing damage and then you grab the, you zoom out, you grab the top of your header bar, so you see the, the, the four crosses, and then you can move them to wherever you want. I generally will stack everything together, and then put a box over everything. Oh, that's not a problem. And that's the thing I like doing, is teaching people to get organized. Building a game doesn't have to be the dark arts here. There's enough confusing shit in this world as it is. You don't need to have this, it's something we're doing for fun, for, for whatever, and you might as well enjoy yourself, and this will help. So this was drawing my pistol, and we'll do pistol stuff, since that's involved in weapons and damage. Let's go ahead and pop that in red as well. And I'm going to move you guys over here until I clean you up better 
and startup stuff, you're a little bit long in the tooth. So I'm going to move you around over here. Move you over here. And then you can actually grab them all together and put a block around that. And damage junk. Yeah. Um, typically, um, multiplayer replication requires you to, to be good at it. Um, you're going to have to sacrifice, um, you know, make a sacrifice to the uh, the demons. Because it is a dark arts, you know. To be good at it. I'm marginal at best. John Galt, whenever he pops in here, that dude has forgot more shit about uh, multiplayer replication than I know. Um, but yeah, this is going to help you to get clean and organized. There's little things you can do, like, um, I know this is, I'm zooming back and forth, I'm probably making people uh, motion sick. Grab all your, your stuff that's in line together, and right click. I don't do this very often, but you can go to alignment, align top, align middle, align left, center, straighten connections, bam. And it just straightened out everything. I don't like it straightened out. But I can, if I get too messy, I can do that, and it'll help me to organize things. Another thing you can do is, since this line is going through my set input to get to here, if you want to clean that up a little bit, um, drag out from the clean side. Well. Let's actually break that link. And again, I'm just going to hold down the control key and drag down. And I'm going to let go somewhere around here. And I'm just going to type in node. There's a hotkey for it. I can't remember. And it creates this right here. You can actually drop that in. And then click off of it. And then when you click on it again, you can now connect it to there and it will straighten out those pins and give you a nice neat clean organized line that's easier to follow than going through other pins so you can do the same thing here if you want to um, come in right here maybe and note I think it's in or something like that I can't remember I will click off of it We'll come over here and we'll add another node. Yeah, you're playing connect the dots. And then we'll plug that in there. That looks a lot cleaner to work with. So again, I can grab this from right here, come to here, add a reroute node, come over to here. And then connect that into here. So it allows you to, to connect the dots, but make it in a, a neater fashion. Think about tape. So you can actually follow the lines a whole lot easier and know what goes where. So you can figure out uh, where did I make my mistake and how do I fix it. Um, it's going to be easier if you can follow your spaghetti a whole lot better. Um, Another thing that comes in quite handy is a print text or a print string. Yeah, it, it it looks a lot easier to follow, though. I mean, if you're trying to figure out where does this go, where does that go, well, okay, if I can follow this, and it goes to uh, player controller, player controller, okay, I know those two have to go together. And then this needs to go to here, but it also needs to go to here. I got it. But utilizing a print text or a print string, um, let's just go ahead and just do keyboard T. Actually, let's do um, keyboard 5. Just whatever. I'm just going to 
so whenever I hit the five key and I'm trying to build this functionality and I'm going through and something is not working you can drag a pin in drag off from here we'll say um, and say print text these lines stay connected in line it, nothing is broken but you added that print text in there you can say whatever you want escape key was pressed or what have you and then when you're done you know that this goes into there so you can delete it and, and run it back across so running that print text and there's also print strings no difference they do the same thing if you just type in print and hit enter it's going to come up with print strings difference is this is a name this is a string you can put text in both so we'll do text and click on here let's make that red and it needs to stay on the screen for five seconds we don't want it to print to log but we want it to print to the screen well yes and, and you can actually if you don't know how to make something work you can always fake it until it works string and we'll change the color to that one to blue and it'll also stay up for five seconds and not right to the log and only to the screen so now if I print or print hit play hit the number five key we get the string and the text we can do both but you can inject those wherever you want so if you're trying to do if I hit the number one key and something's not working the way that I want it to you can put one of those in there so whenever I go into here and I hit the five key oh okay I get I get I see the text so it worked it was a breaking point that gave you a visual indication that something is either working or not working um, we have a spawn point in here so we can actually um, just for shits and grins um, set actor location to be the spawn point and we'll grab our spawn point and stick it in there so now every time we hit the number five key we're going to teleport back to our spawn point so I'll go in here and play we're already at our spawn point so if we move away and hit five key we teleport back to our, our original location where we started in the map so that's a basic teleport it doesn't have to be replicated it just works the cool thing is is um you can actually take something as basic as that I didn't know how to set this so I figured it out I want to set my extra to a new location so that's what I'm gonna do um, you know if you don't know what you're doing a lot of times you can drag off from an executable and you're gonna get the executable actions it just takes take a minute and say actor uh, now I don't want to set the owner add a component hmm do I want to add a camera or a collision chaos um, listening event for chaos destruction um, add audio component you know, just scroll through um, figure out what you're trying to do if you're programming for magic leap there's different things in here for that media media sound component you can add in you press a button and you play music or, or what have you um, paper 2d physics steam VR user interface um, Android permissions check Android permissions or re request them some AI functionality make noise so if you're programming for your AI and whenever you, you fire even if you're in a different room and the the AI can't see you you can make noise or pawn make noise and what that's going to do is you set the uh, the loudness level right there and um, but you can actually create that as a source location for a sound and whenever you're in your NPC 
and let's go to NPC folder, NPC base. On your pawn sensing, if you right click on it, add event on here and noise. Bam. You drop that in and location. You can get the location of the noise, the volume of the noise. So when they hear the noise, it could be the same thing as if they saw you. They can then you can use this for um AI move to and tell them to now move to that location so that they can investigate what's going on. So destination could be a location of the noise, the pawn, well is the instigator, volume, well, acceptable radius. I always try to do at least 50 um, so that they're not standing in your face, you know. But on here, it will then, they will go to that. Yeah, Flash annoyed me years ago whenever I was screwing around with that. So in our player, um, when I press it, just type in the word noise and bam, make noise. Noise location, well, our mesh is always going to give us a location. We get the location of our mesh, so get world location. It's always a good way to get our location, right? Um, target. Well, automatically set to self, and I really haven't messed with the, the loudness. Um, one is full volume, that's fine. Max range, at which the sound can be heard. Zero is no max range, and that's fine. Tag, we can actually put a tag to it, the name of the, uh, the noise. So, and this is probably not going to work, but... I don't know if I've got a nav mesh bound set up in here or not, and whether or not I've told them to move correctly, but if I hit the number five, we don't have a visible representation here. Um, do I have nav mesh? No, I don't see one. Let's actually, um, shit the grins. Let's go ahead and put a nav mesh bound in. So I don't know if I've, I told the, um, the bot to be able to walk correctly yet. But let's put a nav mesh bounds in. We'll sink that in the ground a little bit. And allow them room to, to move somewhere, you know? Doesn't have to be the full map, but can always put it at zero, zero, and zero. And if we hit the P key, we can see green. That green means that's a walkable area. Meshes, there's two different basic types of meshes. There is a static mesh and there's a skeletal mesh. And if I hit five now, does that actually work? He just aims at me. Um, told him to move to. So a static mesh, and I don't know why, but, well, a static mesh essentially, oh, hello, stop shooting me. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is working or not. So if you don't know if something is working or not, you can always do this. Um, when I press 5, we know that it's doing that, and we can put another one in here. Print text. The second one we will say noise made first one will say button pressed uh, static mesh does not have a skeleton a skeletal mesh has a skeleton and if it has a skeleton it can be animated so if I press 5 noise made button pressed so yeah I'll figure out the, the noise thing later um, Yeah, like this right here, this wall, 
this is a static mesh. Static meshes, when thrown into the map, and I'm going to throw another curveball in here, but this is a static mesh. It is basically a cube. It's a basic component of a cube. I throw this in, it will affect navigation. So if I press Q or P, you can see that they see them, and the AI will not walk into that like an idiot. They'll walk around it. So when they're trying to figure out their navigation, that's going to be affected by it. You've got geometries. They don't affect lighting in their native source. If you just drag one into your map, it's going to have no material on it whatsoever. However, if you go to... So it's materials. If I select the blue material, for example, I have it selected here. So now whenever I bring a, a BSP geometry into the, the map, it's going to be completely wrapped in that material and not be a problem. And a big problem that I see a lot of people do whenever they're using the basic shapes and BSP geometries is they use this tool right here select and scale objects to be able to change the size of it. Yeah, static meshes would typically be for things you're walking on, walls, visible things you see that don't need to be animated. They don't need to be able to do an animation to change the way that they look. So static meshes are just that. They're static. They don't do anything but look pretty. Um, skeletal mesh has a skeleton, hence the name Skeletal Mesh, so that they can actually be given animations to do things. So, doesn't mean that you can't provide an animation for um, a static mesh in sense. You can actually turn a static mesh into a Skeletal Mesh, even if you don't have a complete rig. Um, but you really should have a skeletal mesh for what you're working with if you want it to animate. So your BSP, like I said, people will make a mistake and they'll use the scale objects. You'll use this to change the size of it. But what happens is it stretches and skews the material and it's more of a pain in the ass to work with. So if you actually use your brush settings to change that, we'll change the X. Which way is X? If you look right here, you can see X is going this way. Y is going this way, left and right, this way. And it rotates around along with you. Z is always going to be up, up and down. But nobody sends me enough tips and donations. And I always get so many different questions, and I never do finish working on my actual private courses that I was actually making. So, I can actually change this in the Y to 400, can change the Z value to 100, and if I change the Z value, my floors always are on zero. So half your Z should be your location transform. So if my Z value is 100, this needs to be 50. And that's because I didn't make this room. This was a third person example map and my floor is not on, this floor is not on zero. So 130.27, that's so retarded, is the the level at which they decide they're going to create their floor. So if I want this to be right, I have to change this now uh, for this object that I just created. Well, Control Z and Control Z, so that we I got it back up here again. Um, we'd have to add 130 to that, so that would be. You know, I'm not doing math, so I can just move it down. Another cool thing you can do with it, um, with BSP geometries, is you can actually go into this mode right here, geometry editing, and I want to extrude this up and add another 
section to it. So I can go to extrude. Never show me this again. I don't care what your your point was. And now I can drag up from here and I've just added a whole new set to that. So why? Well, I can go ahead and click here and here we'll say and it automatically went back to edit. Now I can move those two points by themselves back to there. And then, yeah, buying the SMST um, is a, a big help. Thanks, Eagle. Move that to here. And I just changed my BSP geometry into this shape, whatever it is. Um, and you can just select your points. And let's move those over to there. Because buying the, the SMST is, is $20 US currency and US dollars. Let's me buy ammo so that I can get toilet paper after these fucktards go on this stupid spree of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna avoid that because YouTube has been banning videos and demonetizing videos and shit like that based on people talking about the thing, the virus thing. Even though this video is not monetized, they would demonetize it just because of that. I have no no clue what I'm making here, but the whole point is you can actually um, take control of your BSP geometries, and make your own custom meshes this way. You can extrude, you can clip, lathe, pin, extrude. You can do all kind of stuff with it, and um, change the format. And then once you're done with it, and you look at it, it's like, well, this kind of looks like crap because the material is no longer on it. I can just click on it, and in the map, go to select, select all adjacent surfaces. I already have my blue material. Display two materials. Hit the arrow here, and boom. You can go back in there and say, okay, well, I want this face, this one, I'm just control left clicking on the, the faces and I want those to be red and the top piece up here I want it to be green so I'll select all these faces and we'll do the top as well and we'll go green so you can make your own custom static meshes out of BSP geometries this way and even though it's not a static mesh yet you can always come back in here and select it alright that's good and under my brush settings click right here and create static mesh pick a folder you want to go into in this case mesh folder we're gonna call this SM stupidity and then hit create static mesh it automatically replaces the one in the scene with the static mesh version. So that's a thing now. It's a static mesh and it's in the map. It affects lighting and navigation and everything else. But I can actually go here to the magnifying glass, find it. What's going to happen now after you convert it to a static mesh, it no longer has collisions. Hey, don't you shoot me, you son of a bitch. I'll kick your ass. damn wall that's why and that was the thing is I'm I just wall hacked I'm facing the wall but I was shooting him and he couldn't see me but yeah this thing has no no collision anymore and to fix that another thing you're gonna have to do first off is scroll down you go to your um, general settings show advanced under your light map resolutions 48, 96, 2412, whatever. Um, any two digit number is fine. You're, you're talking about um, like 96 bit or 98 bit or just, I don't know. 
I could explain it, but I just don't care right now. <laughs> but light map coordinate index is one. You do need to change that as well and hit save. Yeah, well, you mess around watching my channel. You'll you'll convert from fully over from Unity to uh, Unreal Engine 4. So much easier to work with and prototype with. And, and even with the blueprints, you can make a full game and never do any C++ or no, no programming. Just do everything blueprint-wise. You can cheat with your collisions and say use complex is simple, but I don't want to cheat. Even though it says... Um, collision preset block all there's still no collision to it I can go to collision and simple collision and there's nothing there if I were to cheat and use complex collision as simple you can see that there's all these different faces on that I don't want to do that so let's go to collisions up top add a box simplified collision and that's going to be a complete square and if this is not what you want, then you can grab right here. You can click on the collision itself, and you can reshape it. You can see I just had to rebuild the navigation because I modified the uh, the collision of something that's currently in my map. So we have that basic collision right there. Um, you could have also tried the um, one of the um, other collisions, and that will probably be usable, but entirely up to you on that. I just put the uh, the basic box in there and resized it. Um, well, yeah, we'll just we'll do this. First off, we're going to go ahead and delete all of them, remove collisions, and then put that one back in. So it at least gives us something for a collision. So if we hit play now, are you shooting me? It is a physical object with collisions now that we can interface with. It's not a perfect um, collision mesh on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh damn, he's accurate with his shots too, so. So he's just disappearing. I didn't, we'll, we'll fix the, uh, the AI before we actually put him into the other project. But yeah, that is that. That's good. And we'll do save all, save selected. We'll have you, close you. And we still have this project open. Um, this is a pretty good start for, for earlier. And I'm just going to go back into a quick um, recap. What we did was... We draw our pistol out. We can actually change over to a silencer. Change the location for the muzzle flash and the sound file. And adds a silencer to our weapon. We're starting to throw a line trace, and that's just, it's not 100% functional yet. But it's tagging whatever we're hitting, it's giving us a, a location of it. And of course we got the mag reload. So, all fun. I hit save all. Save selected. No, I'm already done. Once I hit the one hour mark, it turns into spitballing. So if you're ever looking at my, my videos that are over an hour long, then um, the first hour is going to contain all the goodness. The second, anything after that first hour is just chatting with people. So even if you're you're looking to do a specific thing and you see it's a stream and it's four hours long or three hours long or something like that, don't fret. All the good shit's in the first half of the video or the first part of the video. After that, you know, don't be scared to watch a video because it's two hours long or an hour and a half long or what have you. If it's teaching something, the teaching portion is going to be in the first part of the video anyway. So it's going to do... Even though I haven't done anything, uh, every time I do a stream now, I'm going to do a quick recap of my stream party and what's going on with it. 
basically after I did a, a few fixes, I haven't done anything else. Because you guys wanted to see the FPS thing, so I did that, and I'll show a recap on that one real quick. And then I'm going to get out of here and have me a smoke break, and then I'm going to hijack Eagle there, and we're going to go to Sniper Elite 4 and go blast some fools in the face. Alright, so our character... Yeah, much rejoicing. I haven't done the save game yet, but so you got to start a little town. You can go through and walk around and check out things. Um, walk inside the house if you want to. Um, I do need to fix the sit in a chair thing. Um, I do know how to fix it. I just haven't fixed it. Um, so you can sit down, chill out, and this will be fixed here very soon. It'll take you five minutes to fix it, and I just need to do it. So, yeah, I mean, sit down on a chair. That's working correctly now. Can't move. So you can sit down on a chair. You can just kind of hang out and chill. Um, press E to get into a chair. Press E to get back out. Um, you run over the football. You can pick it up. Go in here. Say, okay. Boop. You can throw the football. Only if you have one. I just threw it, and it's gone forever. Um, <laughs> because it's awesome, you can dance. Press the F key. Okay, you just don't want to do that dance anymore? No problem. Hit the Q key, you open up your phone. That's a little animation there. Go into that part. We'll change our dance to Gangnam Style. Hit Change Dance. And hit Q again to close my phone. I want to hit F to start doing my dance. And that's fully replicated and everything, too, so. F again, go into our phone. Um, actually, let's close our phone. If I hit the G key right now as a debug thing, you can see I'm the admin. It pops up green saying I'm admin. If you're not, if you're just a regular player on this, this game, if you hit the G key, it's going to report back saying normal player. But um, since I'm the admin, I have the ability to click this little center button right here, boop, and it gives me a hidden screen. I can turn on the mod maker gun, which means I can then aim at somebody and press the left mouse button, and whoever I just fired at gets tagged and they become a moderator. So when they go on duty, I'm the admin. I, I'm I'm FBI guy. But if the other player is a um, is given moderator status, they're a police officer, not an FBI officer. And you can actually. Uh, we'll be able to send people to jail. They'll go into a jail cell. This is not a finished area yet, but um, they can go off to it. You can go back to your regular mesh again. Um, I haven't finished those over there yet. Run over here, and there is a store set up with um, masks. Whatever mask you want to wear. And Again, I haven't been working on this in a couple days, so all the fixes I said that I'm going to do, I haven't had a chance to do yet. You got these three, and then you got all these over here. I want to be a chicken head. So we'll go over to the vendor, press E, select it from here. I want to be chicken. Give me my free mask. And exit. Now I'm chicken man. Yeehaw, chicken man. I go on duty, I'm still chicken man. But I don't want that mask on. So I can go back into my phone, go into here, and hit off on the mask, and it's gone. If I want it back, I can just hit on. Um, so yeah. I did add a car in here. Gotta have a Camaro in here. So, um, there will be a lot of Easter eggs and stuff, too. Um, you know, I, I like classic games where they add Easter eggs in. Um, Easter eggs are basically just hidden something in the map. Whenever you actually find it, it's like, oh my god, what is that? Or, you know, a comical feature that doesn't make or break the game, but just eh, looks cool, or is funny, or whatever. Um, one of the games... Um, you gonna open up the project or what? One of the games that I did uh, a demo for if you just happen to find just the right spot and um, 
look in the window, there's um, a guy getting a blowjob. So you don't see like penis or anything like that, but you know it's just the, the fact that you see a guy standing there with his hands up, up on his head and then a, a girl in front of him taking care of business. So just little Easter eggs for the pervert, not not always perverted, but just you know. Yeah, well, see, I keep wanting to do a um, a side scroller that's a homage to um, Pitfall from Atari. Maps. So I did change the controls around on here. So we hit play. You see, it's real dark, but I can turn on my flashlight. Controls are a whole lot smoother now. So we got um, right click brings up the red dot optic. You can shoot, or you can hit key and add a silencer. Got reload sounds. Really pathetic death sound. Oh, you want a scope instead of a red dot? Okay. Change to the rifle scope, and you can zoom in. Mouse wheel. You can actually increase or decrease your zoom. Your doom or zoom, whatever. Ah! 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 <laughs> oh, you want to go back to the red dot? No problem. You want to get rid of the silencer? Okay, no problem. Oh, that was a grenade. Um, there we go. Nice big bright muzzle flash. Turn on the flashlight. It gets dark. Turn it on. Yeah, okay. I want sounds are back. Anybody alive? See, I can strafe diagonally now. Um, for anybody that was following along with this one, um. Really quickly, I'll show the uh, the fix for that. Um, it was the FPS assault pack blueprints riffle riffle character. If you were to look at their character, and let me pull up the um, the AK character. Because it's that horrible too. Um, I'm gonna change it to where there's only one player character. You don't have to have a separate one. Um, yeah, this is what they were doing for their input. W, set move forward or not for press and release. That's how they were doing their freaking character movement. And essentially, all you have to do is, and all this, all the event tick, everything that's in here on this event tick, absolutely worthless. Grab all of it, select it, hit delete, get rid of it. Come back over here to, this is the default movement. All you do is you connect this to here and the axis value to the scale value. Same thing on move right, connect that to there and that to there and it's fixed. Back to normal movement why he decided he wanted to whoever made the, uh, the asset pack wanted to um, change the movement system around I don't know but this is how I did it in here and it's working as intended instead of manually saying if I press W I can go forward if I press eh, eh, then, no because then you couldn't move diagonally and to me um, let's actually change maps So we're going to see here. Um, you could only move forward, left, right, backwards. You couldn't move forward and diagonal. You're diagonally. So it really annoyed the crap out of me. And it was really, really quick fix. Scope. Zoom in. let go and it resets my zoom back to as if I didn't zoom in or out so 
Let me change back. But I do want the silencer on. So yeah, this was all, every, everything else in the making of this was done on on video, on streams. So if you're wanting to create this, and just follow the FPS two videos. So the first hour of it is actually doing the work. After that, it's just goofing off. Speaking of goofing off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm starting to wonder if I have anything to freaking eat. Besides a box of Swedish fish. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to get out of here and hijack Eagle there. And we're going to play some Sniper Elite 4. Y'all make sure you keep up with me on my Discord channel. And quit messing with that Unity crap and come to the dark side. We have better cookies. Hooker is in Blackjack. Mm. Alright, so I want to thank everybody for stopping in and watching. This is always fun. Um, I will do some more video videos on the um, the the Bank High stuff instead of just doing streams. That way people can keep caught up. But yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And again, if you guys don't have my, my simple multiplayer Steam template, give me all your monies and I'll be glad to take it. Alright, thanks guys. We'll see you around.